Good morning. Uh, we'll start with uh, short introductions by the Secretary General and the President, and then they'll be happy to take a few questions. Secretary General. President uh, Rumen Radev, uh, welcome so much to NATO headquarters, and uh, congratulations on your appointment as uh, President. And uh, I would also like to say welcome back to NATO headquarters, because uh, you told me that you have been working here many years ago. And that just underlines your personal commitment and uh, understanding of uh, the importance of uh, NATO. And uh, in your previous role as uh, commander of the Bulgarian Air Force, you helped to keep our airspace safe. And I know that you will uh, remain uh, uh, committed uh, uh, to uh, NATO and to our shared uh, security now in your new role as uh, president. For almost 13 years, Bulgaria has been a valued ally, uh, making many important contributions uh, to our uh, collective uh, defense. Uh, you provide ships uh, to NATO patrols in the Black Sea, and you play a key role in uh, the security of uh, your region through your contributions to NATO presence in Kosovo, uh, your support for the Euro-Atlantic integration uh, of the Western Balkans, and your assistance uh, to Ukraine, where you lead the NATO Trust Fund on medical rehabilitation. I'm also very grateful for your strong commitment to NATO's presence in Afghanistan, helping to fight terrorism and to prevent that Afghanistan once again becomes a safe haven for international uh, terrorism. I met Bulgarian uh, troops in Afghanistan, and uh, it's great to be able to tell you that they were very professional, very committed, and we are proud of having uh, Bulgarian troops as part of our presence in uh, Afghanistan. Um, the security environment uh, which surrounds us is uh, changing. Uh, we see a more assertive Russia. Uh, we see the turmoil and the violence uh, to the south, uh, terrorism. And we see uh, cyber attacks and hybrid uh, warfare. Uh, NATO is responding. Uh, we are responding by increasing our presence, uh, both in the southeast of the alliance and in the Baltic countries and in uh, Poland. Uh, we are strengthening our presence in the Black Sea region with a package of measures on land, at sea, and in the air. And we will finalize uh, this work at our meeting of defense ministers in February. And several allies have already indicated they will contribute to this presence, a strong sign of NATO solidarity. Uh, but security does not come for free. Uh, therefore, we have to increase defense spending. Uh, uh, and I welcome that Bulgaria uh, has now started to increase uh, its investments in defense. I think this just uh, underscores the commitment of uh, Bulgaria uh, to uh, NATO and to uh, NATO decisions uh, to uh, strengthen uh, our collective defense and to increase defense uh, uh, spending. NATO does not want uh, confrontation uh, with Russia. We don't seek confrontation with Russia. We don't want a new Cold uh, War. So our response is measured, it is transparent, and it is uh, defensive. But it sends a clear signal that we stand together, uh, that uh, all allies are ready to protect uh, each other, uh, defending uh, one another. So, President, uh, welcome once again to NATO headquarters. It's great to see you, and I look forward to working uh, with you. Uh, welcome once again. Secretary General, thank you for your hospitality and for the kind words about Bulgaria and about its role and contribution to NATO. Help you for this possibility to exchange important opinions currently on the agenda of the Alliance. The fact, the very fact that me, in my capacity as Bulgarian president, on my very first visit abroad, am visiting the headquarters of NATO, shows the importance that Bulgaria attaches to NATO as an organization of shared values and of shared responsibilities to our collective security and defense.
to us. In Bulgaria, NATO remains an extremely important organization to defend the safety and security of the allies and to guarantee stability beyond the borders of NATO. It is especially important for us that all the opinions that we exchange today, we support NATO efforts to defend and deter. And we believe that Bulgaria is part of these efforts and we will continue in the future to make every effort all it takes to guarantee the common contribution to, common, uh, to collective security and defense. Over the last three years, NATO has been undergoing a very serious adaptation and Bulgaria has been part of this adaptation and this process will continue and be taken further because this is what the international situation calls for at the moment. I have assured the Secretary General that Bulgaria will make the maximum effort to reach the Wales summit decisions to reach the benchmark of 2% of the GDP for defense spending. This is extremely important for our capabilities and every country member of the alliance needs to uh, remain committed to the 2% benchmark because this is what will guarantee our security. I also assured the Secretary General that we do all it takes to modernize the Bulgarian armed forces by implementing the investment projects for modernization already adopted by the Bulgarian parliament as an investment spending, as investment expenditure project. It is also important to us that NATO continues to consolidate its efforts in the combat against international terrorism, combat against illegal trafficking in humans and illegal migrants. This for us is extremely important. And really, uh, from the dialogue that I had uh, with the Secretary General, I feel his NATO's support on this important issue. I highly appreciate NATO's role in the Western Balkans as a guarantor for security. And once again, I'd like to thank the Secretary General for this opportunity today to exchange really very important for Bulgaria and for the Alliance opinions and topics. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Uh, BTV? Uh, hello, dear Secretary General and Mr. President. My question is related to the policy concerning Russia that will be led by the new President of the United States, Donald Trump. And how do you think, in what aspect do you think this policy will affect uh, the most um, strength, the biggest reinforcement along the eastern flank of NATO, which is the biggest reinforcement that we've had since the end of the Second World War? How will Donald Trump's policy I affect I spoke this? with uh, then uh, President-elect uh, Donald uh, Trump after he was elected in uh, November, and I also spoken with uh, uh, Secretary uh, of Defense uh, uh, Mattis recently, and uh, they have all conveyed the, the same message, that the United States uh, will uh, remain committed to NATO, to the transatlantic bond, and uh, that uh, uh, it's not only something that they say, but we also see now that uh, the United States is actually increasing its uh, presence in, the, uh, in Europe. Uh, there is a strong bipartisan support uh, in the Congress, uh, and uh, the Congress has uh, quadrupled funding for uh, the European Reassurance Initiative, which is funding increased military presence of the United States in Europe with a new brigade, with, uh, with more training, with uh, more exercises, and with more pre-positioned equipment and supplies. So this is a strong political commitment, but it's also followed by, uh, with deeds, uh, more presence in, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, and uh, and uh, when it comes to the relationship to Russia, uh, I would like to underline that our increased presence in Europe is a, uh, is, uh, uh, a measured and proportionate response to uh, the uh, behavior of Russia uh, and uh, a more assertive Russia, uh, which has implemented a significant military buildup over many years and which has uh, used military force against a neighbor, uh, against Ukraine. 
Uh, NATO is responding, uh, but we are responding in a defensive way, in a measured way. We don't want a confrontation, we don't want a, a, a new Cold War. Uh, so we are, uh, we are uh, keeping the channels for political dialogue open with uh, Russia. And uh, uh, the message from the incoming administration is that uh, the new US administration is that they also want dialogue with Russia, but it's based on strength. And I think that's exactly the same message that we um, uh, are conveying from the whole alliance. And we agreed in Warsaw at our summit that we need strong defense, but also political dialogue with Russia. And I look forward to work uh, together with the new president and his security team on exactly uh, on how to implement and how to follow up uh, that message. Bulgarian National Radio, just behind, lady there. Will Bulgaria this year take part in more large-scale operations or trainings with the allies? And what do you think will be the greatest challenge to NATO in the coming months? Well, NATO, Bulgaria is participating in many different kinds of trainings and training and exercises in NATO and with the NATO allies. Actually, tomorrow uh, there will be a new... Uh, uh, multinational exercise that will start uh, in the Black Sea, uh, a, a maritime uh, exercise with uh, uh, the participation of Bulgaria, but also with ships from uh, Canada, from the United States, from Turkey, and from other, uh, other NATO allied uh, countries. So it just uh, illustrates that there are several exercises, uh, different kinds of uh, training activities uh, where uh, Bulgaria uh, uh, participate. And, uh, and this is a part of uh, the increased uh, presence uh, in the southeast of Europe uh, with uh, more uh, patrols in the Black Sea and also with more exercises, and Bulgaria is uh, part of that. If I can just uh, add, our participation in NATO is very important for us, not only because uh, it increases the security in our region, it's extremely important because it enhances our, the military capability of our armed forces, because in each such exercise we acquire new tactics, new techniques and new procedures. Okay, one very last quick question, Wall Street Journal. Maybe not quick. Um, uh, to the president, um, I wonder uh, if you think it's time for sanctions against Russia to be eased and whether you think more broadly NATO should pursue uh, improved relationship with Russia given Mr. Trump's desires for cooperation on counterterrorism. To the Secretary General, I wonder if you could comment on the sanctions issue, but also um, the Iranians test fired a ballistic missile. I wonder if this uh, what you think this says about the relevance of NATO missile defense and whether missile defense systems should be on the table uh, in discussions with uh, Russia. First of all, the increase of the defense and deterrence posture of NATO should be hand in hand, as Secretary General said, with deepening the political dialogue with Russia in order to uh, avoid confrontation and misunderstandings and to lower the risks. And as President Trump also shared, the main challenges and threats today come from international terrorism, countering the Islamic State. These are all threats that cannot be tackled unless NATO and Russia are, are, have common efforts on this, both in the Middle East and in the global uh, fight against terrorism. Uh, we are looking into uh, uh, the nature of what happened uh, and the details uh, surrounding the uh, ballistic missile uh, launch. Uh, so I cannot comment uh, uh, on the details of uh, that incident. Uh, but what I can say is that uh, uh, NATO continues to develop its uh, ballistic missile uh, defense system uh, because uh, we see that uh, several nations, uh, including Iran, uh, are uh, developing uh, different kinds of uh, uh, ballistic missiles. 
uh, and uh, are testing and, uh, and, uh, and strengthening their uh, systems. Uh, and that just underlines that NATO has to continue uh, to develop a ballistic uh, missile uh, defense uh, system. Uh, our uh, uh, BMD, or our ballistic missile defense, uh, is not directed against Russia. It's uh, directed against threats coming from outside the Euro-Atlantic uh, area. Uh, uh, we have previously offered uh, Russia to, uh, to, uh, to work together with them on, uh, on this. Uh, then Russia uh, rejected. Uh, and NATO has continued uh, to develop our uh, system, which is a defensive system, uh, and it's a way to protect uh, uh, Europe against uh, uh, missile uh, threats. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Oh, sorry, sanctions. Uh, so, sanctions. Uh, <laughs> sanctions is part of the response uh, from uh, many countries to the aggressive actions of uh, Russia against Ukraine. Uh, the sanctions are decided by the European Union, the United States and uh, other countries. It's not a NATO decision, but I have supported and welcomed uh, the sanctions. What NATO has done is that we have responded by increasing our military presence in the eastern part of the alliance, and we are continuing to do exactly that uh, by implementing the decisions uh, uh, on enhanced and tailored forward presence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.